of you this that conference have joined will us now be recorded for our morning glory devotional. We're going to turn it over now to Apostle Innocent. God bless you, and we're anxious to hear the word of the Lord today. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, my mother. Good morning. Uh, good morning, the saints of God, and uh, happy new week. Uh, welcome to the first day of the new week. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We serve a mighty God. We serve a great God. We serve a God that does not act like men. We serve a God that does not do things like men. His understanding is beyond the understanding of men. He is the God that created the heavens and the earth. He is ancient of the days. He is the God that does not consult your past to do what he wants to do in your future. He is the God that does not consult your enemies to approve you for next level, to approve you for his blessings, to approve you for open doors, to approve you for favor. He is our God, he is my God, he is your God. This morning we bless his name, this morning we worship him, this morning we give him all the glory due unto him. Thank you, Father. You are the reason we are here. Uh, you are the reason for our gathering. And uh, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. We thank you because wherever two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in their means. And um, because you are there in their means, the yokes must be broken, bodies will be lifted, and the sick must be healed, closed doors must be opened. Lord, those that are that doesn't have future, you give them future. So I thank you today. I bless your name as we commit this service into your hands. Take absolute preeminence. Put your word in my mouth that I will speak as you will put it in my mouth. I will not speak like human. Take away human understanding, human knowledge and let divine knowledge, divine understanding, Lord, take place. And I ask so God, King of Glory, that at the end of this service this morning, every one of us connected and those that are about to connect, uh, we be having every cause to glorify your holy name. I thank you because I sense it in my spirit that there is a miracle there is a testimony you will give to us today. There is somebody that is yearning, longing for a testimony that you are giving him or her the testimony this morning. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your power. I thank you, your power that has no limits. Oh, I thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name, Father God. Even to helping us to behold another day, a brand new day. Lord, it is not by our power. It is not by our strength. It is by your mercy. Thank you for showing us your mercy. Without glorify, in Jesus' name, and amen. Thank you, and welcome to Monday, the 23rd of May, 2022. This is the first day of the week. Monday opens the womb of the week. And then we are prophetically speaking into today on what is most delivered to us starting from tomorrow to the end of the week. So I'm excited, you know, to bring the word to us this morning. May 23rd Monday, and we are having our anchor scripture in Acts chapter 21, verse 14. Acts 21, 14 says, when it was clear 
that we couldn't persuade Paul. We gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. Now, let, let me stand on this and declare to somebody's life and destiny prophetically. Today, there are, there are things that must give up. Things that are trying to bring you down must give up. Things that are trying you know, to keep you in a particular spot in life and destiny must give up. This is a declaration to somebody's life. Now, the devotional reading says, though God encourages us to surrender ourselves with spirit-inspired advisors, with spirit-inspired advisors, not advisors that are carnal, not advisors who don't understand the things of the spirit, not advisors, advisors that will become, you know, an abortion to your God-given dreams and visions. There is an encouragement to us by God to surrender ourselves with spirit-inspired counselors, advisors, company, associates. There will be times when we have to stand alone. There is time to have people around you, and there is as well time to stand alone. Remember what happened, the transformation that took place in the life of Jacob took place when he was left alone and he restored. At that time, he was with the company of his wives and his children and his, uh, his servants. At a time, he was left alone. Let's continue. Not many counselors would have encouraged Abraham that he should hang on to receive God's promise of a child at the age of 100. 100. No singular advisor would have encouraged him. They would have told him, oh, boy, you get to do something. You need to help yourself. They said they have not helped those that help themselves. But Abraham chose to hang on to receive the promise of God. Joseph almost got killed for the dream God gave him. Why he shared his dream, thinking his brethren would have be of good health to interpret his dream, but rather they sorted a way to kill him and his dream. No military advisor would endorse Joshua's battle plan of marching around Jericho. You know, Jericho, that was strictly shut down because of the children of Israel, that no one goes out, nobody comes in. And the Bible says, Joshua got a message from God on how to go about that very battle. So no military advisor would have advised him just to march around the city, and that is the end. So, no one would have told Jesus, yes, we think going to the cross is the right duration for you. No one would have done that. No, this is not true. This is not, no, you should do that. But he decided to do it because it was 
the will of God for him. So, nearly all of Paul's friends told him not to go to Jerusalem after his third missionary journey. Yet in all things, in all these cases, the counselors, both hypothetic and real, would have been wrong. God was calling each of these people, as well as many prophets and saints, throughout scripture and history to follow him regardless of what those around them would advise. Think about it. Abraham, waiting for the promised child at the age of 100. Think about Abraham, even when the promised child came and the Lord told him, take the child and offer him as a bond offering unto me. No counselor, no advisor would have advised him to do so, to take your child, to go and kill your child. What about Joseph, the great dreamer? What about Moses going back to the city where he was declared wanted? What about Joshua marching around the world of Jericho? Just going around the world of Jericho. What about David coming to battle with a catapult, a strange? to face a man that was armed. No adversary would have advised him to do so. What about Job? The prophets, Jesus, and Paul all had to do or believe something that defied human reason. All had to do something that defied human reason. At times, they had to go against advice from people who knew God well. The many advisors in their lives sometimes gave good but misguided counsel and sometimes they directly opposed God's plan. These faithful people had to know God's voice well enough to ignore contradictory advice. We need to come to that point where we know God's voice well, when God says go. When people advise you not to go, you know that no, this is not coming from God. What I heard from God is go. What I heard from God is wait. We must also learn God's voice that well. We should always listen to spirit-inspired people. But we are never to blindly follow their counsel. There will be times when we have heard God clearly enough that no other voice should be allowed to influence us. God uses such experiences not to give us an excuse for our independent tendencies, but to stretch our faith and refine our hearing in humility and strength. We must resolve to go where he leads, no matter what anyone else says. 
the prayer, Lord, give me the desirement to know when you are speaking to me through your people. And when you are speaking to me apart from them, give me the humility to follow advice and the wisdom and resolve to know when it rejects it. Amen. Let's go back to our scripture. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21, verse number 14. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21, verse number 14. The scripture says, and when he would not be persuaded, we cease, saying, the will of the Lord be done. Now I want to say that Apostle Paul, on his way to Jerusalem, everyone he goes, he is being warned by the spirit of the suffering and the imprisonment that wait for him there. On his way to Jerusalem, everywhere he goes, he is being warmed by the spirit of the suffering and imprisonment that awaits for him there. It was serious to the extent that prophet Agabus came down to Caesarea just to warn Paul what would befall him in Jerusalem. How did he do so? He took Paul's guido and bound himself with it, then prophesied that thus would demand who owned the Guido be born and turned over to the Gentiles when he came to Jerusalem. This also was in the case of Jesus. The phrase turned over to the Gentiles signified death by crucifixion. At this point, the friends that had been accompanying Paul along with those in Caesarea began to beg Paul not to go to Jerusalem. And because what they are saying was not what Paul heard, he was acting on what he heard, on his conviction. On the assignment that God gave to him, Paul responded, what do you mean by these tears? Are you trying to break my heart? I am ready not only to be born, but to die for the Lord Jesus in Jerusalem. So when they saw that Paul could not be discouraged from going to Jerusalem, they seized their crying and pleaded and said, the will of the Lord be done. You see, on the will of the Lord to be done, I discover that the level of your search for God's will is what determines the level of your finding in life. 
the level of our search for the will of God is what determines the level of our finding in life. The will of the Lord often involves suffering. You remember the prayer of Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane concerning the cup. If it is possible, let this cup pass from me. When he come back to a point of nevertheless, not my will, but I will be done. Because I am here on assignment. I didn't send myself. Someone sent me. And it is not my will that should be done. An assignment that is given to me by another person. But it is the will of the one that sent me. Come on, Call out zero four, please. You can you know, mute your your speaker to avoid the the distraction. So he said, "Not my will, but thy will be done." So it was the will of the Father that His Son should suffer the shame, the humiliation, the agony of the cross that he might provide the way of forgiveness for our sins. That is the will of God. Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 21, for even here unto we are here called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his footsteps. That is the statement of Peter. Christ went ahead of us and he did all he did that we should follow. You know, serving God is not only on the, on, it is not only milk and honey. There is a time it will be milk and honey and there is a time you have to go through some certain things that may not be you know, okay, comfortable, you know, to you. But that is the will of God for you and for me. So Paul spoke of the suffering he endured for the cause of Christ. In Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, verse 24, verse 25, verse 26, verse 27, and verse 28, we see and we discover all that Apostle Paul mentioned, all the levels of suffering he went through for the cause of Christ. In verse 23, are they ministers of Christ? I more. I have labored more abundantly in stripes above measure. In prisons, more frequent, I faced death often. 24 of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Verse 25, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day. I have been in the deep. In verse 26, in the journey often, in Paris of water, in Paris of robbers, in Paris of my own countrymen, in Paris by the hidden, in Paris in the city, in Paris in the wilderness, in Paris in the sea, in Paris among false brethren. In verse 27, he was talking about in weariness, and in painfulness, in watching often, in hunger, in thirst, in fasting often, in cold and in nakedness. Then in verse 28, he has well said, beside those things that are without, 
that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the church. The care of all the church. No wonder the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, 2, 3, and 4, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For considering him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be warmed or wearied and faint in your minds, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Beloved, you see, when we read of what people have had to endure for Christ Jesus and what they are enduring today in some parts of the world where there is violent, violently opposed to the preaching of the gospel of Christ, you can realize that we have a soft ground where we are. Paul and Barnabas were described as men who had hazarded their lives for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. They said this we are men who could not be silenced or stopped by threat or violence from their enemies or by the tears of their friends. The friends of Paul cried, hearing of what Prophet Agabus said that was to be following him if he eventually gets to Jerusalem. They cried, they wept, but he told them, I am in for the will of God and not the will of man. If it is the will of God for all that the prophet has said that will be following me in Jerusalem, let it be. Praise God. So he was saying that. So beloved, it is time. There is a time, there is a time, there is a time for us to listen to advices of friends, of people around us. And there is also a time for us not to listen to the advices and listen to the voice of God or what God is telling us, what God is telling us to do, what God is telling us to do is more importantly than the advices of people. And when they could not, they said, let the will of the Lord be done. Was the will of God done over his life? Yes, the will of God was done. So it was motivated by their love. What prompted their cry? It was motivated by their love for Paul. Many times our love for our friends would cause us to seek to hinder them from following the will of God. Our love for brothers, our love for family, our love for one thing or the other, many times could hinder us from following the will of God. We don't want to see them hazard their lives. As Paul's friends, we don't want to see him hazard his life. They were greatly disturbed at the prospect of Paul being imprisoned and afflicted. When it became obvious that Paul could not be discouraged, deceased, trying to do so, and committed it all to the will of God. This is the only place that we will ever really find peace. 
It is in the will of God that we will find peace. It is in the will of God that we will find fulfillment. It is in the will of God that we will find joy. It is in the will of God. The will of the Lord be done. Peter said in First Peter chapter 4 19, wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing as unto a faithful creator. You see, we see this kind of commitment made often by the saints in the past. When Jacob was first to send his son Benjamin down to Egypt, he opposed the idea at first. He opposed the idea at first when his sons came back and told him, This is what happened, this is what happened. And then the, the man in Egypt has demanded that our younger brother should be brought. At first, he didn't like the idea, but he finally had to give in. He then declared, May Almighty God give you grace in the eyes of the man that he may send you away with your other brother and Benjamin. And if I am bereaved, if I am bereaved, so that was what the father of Benjamin did. So when Saul Samuel was just a child and he heard his name being called in the night, he ran in to the room of Eli, the priest, and said, you called me? Eli answered, no, go back to bed. Again, he heard his name being called, and again, he went into Eli. The third time, Eli said, if your name is called again, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The Lord then told Samuel of the judgment that was coming upon the house of Eli. The next day, when Eli asked him, what the Lord had said. Samuel was reluctant to tell him, but Eli said, tell me everything. Hide nothing from me, or may the cause come upon you. And then Samuel told him all, and Eli responded, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemed good to him. Let the will of God be done. When David as well was running away to Jerusalem to escape from his son Absalom, he as well said, if I find favor with the Lord, he will bring me back to this place, to his inhabitation. But if he says, I have no delight in him. Behold, here I am. Let him do unto me what seemed good to him. I'm just giving us instances of people in the Bible that let the will of God be done in their life. And when they let the will of God be done in their life, what happened to them? Jesus prayed, not what I will. Thy will be done. He said to his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That is how powerful the will of God is to us. It is that some are to reluctant to commit ourselves. 
to the will of God. They have false concept of God. As a child of God, we have to come to the point where we let only his voice rule our life, only his voice rule our decisions, only his life, his voice rule over everything about us. Beloved, I understand that as meaning that the will of God is something that would be personally very distasteful. I thought he would force me, you know, to do things that I shouldn't do, go to places that I shouldn't go. I thank God for the life of Apostle Paul, for the maturity of his Christian life. If you are not a mature believer, a mature Christian, hearing all the cry of friends, all the discouragement, the persuasion, and the prophecies, uh, you have been you know, told the world is going to happen, where you are going. If you are not mature, if you've not heard clearly from God, and you are not willing to do the will of God, you will surrender, you give up. And when you give up, you have disappointed God. You see, Prophet Jeremiah as well spoke of the day when God would not write his law on tables of stone, but on the fleshly tablets of our hearts. That is, he would guide us by putting his will in the desire of our hearts. What a gracious and delightful way of making his will known to us. If we really know God, we would not fear his will. If we really know God, we would not be afraid of his will. God is only interested in what is the very best for you. At the initial time, it may not look as if something that is good, but if you yield totally to the will of God, before you get to the end, you will look back and say, God, I thank you for allowing me to yield myself to your will. The will of God is power. The will of God is clothed with his blessings. The will of God is clothed with his open doors, with his favor, with his victory. So as much and as long as we yield to his will, then whatever God wants to do in your life, you will surely do it. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God does not mislead us. I know the thought I have towards you, says yes, the Lord. It is not the thought of sorrow, but the thought of peace. It is not the thought. It is never an evil thought. It is never a thought of abandoning you on the journey of life. He said it's a thought of peace. My will is the will of peace. The will of blessing, the will of fulfillment of your destiny here on the earth. Thought of peace, not of evil, to give you an end that is glorious, to give you an end that is powerful, to give you a colorful end. So God was looking as he would always do at the end resource that he seeks 
to accomplish through the trials that he will allow us to experience. With God, the end does not justify the means. No one knows God better than Jesus, his only begotten son. He actually came to correct many of the false concepts that man had concerning God and revealed to man the true nature of God. God, knowing God so well, he said, I delight to do the will, O oh God. I delight to do thy will, O oh God. God does not always let us know why he is doing or allowing certain things to happen in our lives. He wants us to learn to just trust him. Just trust him as Abraham did. Against faith, Abraham believed. Abraham trusted the Lord. And Joshua got the instruction to walk around the world of Jericho. He trusted. And at the end, the victory was established. That of Jacob, that of Job. So he wants us to do and allow certain things to happen in our lives so that we can learn how to trust God. You will always have turmoil and fear until you come to the place of saying, the will of the Lord be done. The will of the Lord be done. So God is faithful. He is working our working out our internal plan, his internal plan for our lives. He has internal plan for your life. He is working out his internal plan for your life. And all things are going to work together for good for you who love God and who has been called according to his papers. All we need to do, a summary, is our love for Christ should be stronger and stronger and stronger. Even as our will becomes subordinate to the will and the purpose of God. And when it was clear that we could not persuade him, we gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. I pray today that the will of God will be done in our lives as we yield totally to his voice and follow his ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Over to you, my mother. Praise the Lord, um, Apostle Innocent. Will you go ahead and proceed to pray for our families and then we'll um, go off record and allow for comments. Oh, Father, I thank you. I bless your name for our message today. And I lift our families into your hands. Yes, Lord, you are interested in our families, the peace of our families the joy of our families, the victory of our families. And Satan is also well, as well interested in scattering our fa families, in putting discord in families, a misunderstanding in families. I therefore today lift our families into your hands. Lift our families into your hands. Whatever that is committed into your hands is preserved. Whatever that is committed into your hands, you will never allow the devil to tamper with it. I pray any family that is going through any challenge, I demand of God, Father, for peace to come into families today. Let peace come into families today. In the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that any family that is sick, let healing come into those families right now. 
any family that is struggling, I demand the gyms and yoke of struggle be broken out of our families in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, King of glory, that there will be a divine visitation in our families. I pray, O oh God, there will be a divine you know, manifestation in our families. I demand, O oh God, there will be peace, there will be joy, there will be successes, there will be progress, there will be prosperity in our families. Lord, our husbands, our wives, our children, our parents, O oh Lord, will begin to do well. And we pray, O oh God, that your light will shine in our families. In the name of Jesus, any family that is being engulfed with darkness, I command the darkness to disappear and let the light of understanding, let the light of peace, Lord, come upon our families today in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for I know this prayer is answered. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Let me take this off.